All right, Mike's level's good and all that jazz. I'm going to keep notes because I'm nervous when I talk. Hello, uh, my name is Steve Truex. Um, I'm going to give my presentation, How to Help Your Family After You're Gone. And I'm part of the 304 Geeks. Uh, I'm on the board of 304 Geeks who puts on the uh, conference every year. Uh, I am not a lawyer. and The views I do not express do not reflect those of my employer or any other organization. This is just a heads up, and it's something to get you to think about after you pass away and what, how you're going to help your family out. And most of this is common sense, so if you have any questions, either ask me or Google. Uh, Google is your best friend, as all of us in IT know. Uh, while, why am I doing this talk? So a couple years ago, I had a, a friend of the family in church. She was an elderly lady, and she called me up. Her husband passed away a few months earlier, and she said, I can't get into this Mac that I have at home. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, I've tried these help desks and nobody can seem to get it. Can you come help me? I go there and she literally has a piece of paper that took her two weeks to find that had a couple passwords on it that didn't relate to anything that she had. She already had uh, some Windows pop-up Microsoft ad that she clicked on and she was having those guys getting into her computer and paying hundreds of dollars linked to her account to get her in that even couldn't do it. So I started to get me think, I started putting it in the back of my brain, well, what happens when we die? Um, what happens to our accounts and what happens to our families, especially? Because after you die, you could really care less about those backups. Um, I'm, hopefully this, this will play, but this is not what this talks about. And no sound. Wait, let me see if I can get my mic closer here. Okay, you can. Anyway, what the gentleman's saying this this is from um, uh, is is of course from Death Squad. Yeah, uh, the yeah Suicide Squad. So what this is this is Will Smith pointing to say, all right, if this guy shoots me, kill him and then delete my internet history. That's not what this talk's about. This talk is not about deleting your internet history. It's not about hiding things from your family. It's about actually giving things to your family. And on my talk, I might say spouse, significant other, wife. Forgive me. It's for everybody. It's just how my mindset. I don't mean to offend. It's whoever you, you have. Oh, maybe sometimes. All right. So, <laughs> first of all, um, we're going to talk about accounts. Uh, accounts that you have. This is stuff that you should leave uh, to your spouse, wife, whatever. Um, a list of accounts. And it, believe me, even looking at this, I am just as bad. I'm looking and going, I have a LinkedIn account? Why do I not have a, I do not know I have a Yahoo email address and all this stuff. Stuff that you use commonly, you wouldn't have a problem listing your address. But if it's something that you barely use, like my 401 K password, I could not tell you what it was. I know it's about this long, but I could not tell you what it is or that I access that site very long. That might be one that you forget to write down, but it would be a very important thing if for your wife or significant other to have if you pass away. Uh, shared accounts, I found out that Google actually has a feature where you can sign up for shared accounts. So if something happens to you, your wife can get in with her login to your account, you share the account. I found out they have that. Uh, email, of course. How many emails accounts do you have? I, ones for work, ones for junk, ones for you know, ones for this and that and the other. Have those listed with uh, passwords. Uh, and also Bitcoin. I don't personally own any Bitcoin, but uh, you might have them stored away somewhere you don't know about. Keeping these accounts logged in. Uh, your bank account information. I cannot tell you my bank account information. My wife does all that, and if she passes away, I would be in a world of hurt. <laughs> And then also your financial accounts, your retirement, your uh, ones. And my list is not going to be exhaustive. Uh, it's going to be different for every person. Uh, passwords and 2FA. Um, so your, your passwords, of course, I'm a big thing of last pass and these one pass and everything else. But of course, you have one point of failure. You have one password. Is every password that you have in that? No. So you got to think of passwords that you don't use very often that you, your wife might need to use 
uh, when you pass away for financial reasons or otherwise. Uh, password managers are great. Uh, UB keys are awesome. I've got one of those. And by the end, uh, I think it's starting at the beginning of January, before the beginning of January, if you get a subscription to Wired Magazine, it's $5 for the 12-month subscription, and you get a free YubiKey. And I've already gotten one of those. Uh, it, it's been going on all year. So you can get a $5 YubiKey. They're usually like 40 And you would use one of those to get into your accounts, uh, some of your accounts, like a two-factor authentication. Make sure your wife or spouse knows where these things are. Uh, your cell phone should be on you. But then again, it may not. It may not be. And another thing for the cell phone would be your two-factor authentication. Your wife might need access to your account, and the first thing they say is, "Oh, we sent an SMS message to the phone that you know registered it." And then all of a sudden, thank you. All of a sudden, you don't have your. She don't have your cell phone to authenticate that she wants to get into your account. Uh, also, um, your notebook or other electronic devices. Um, He's still trying to back me up. Okay, I talk fast, so this is not going to take long. Uh, access to electronic documents that you may have, your will, financial document. Uh, some of these are going to be very important. In my next couple slides is birth certificate, death certificate, marriage license, your discharge papers, uh, your insurance papers, and all that. That may be electronic form. You may need to know where those are at and try to keep them in a place instead of like all over the place. Or they are on a backup drive somewhere on a USB key that I put somewhere. When you pass away, you're not going to have time to tell your wife where all that stuff is. So have it, having it there and having her know where it's at is a great thing. Um, online accounts. Uh, this is some. I found some interesting stuff out. So Google, uh, she can submit a request, or he can submit a request uh, regarding your the deceased user's account. They're going to be needing uh, some documentation and stuff, of course, to send to Google to get access. They do not get access to your username or password. None of these accounts will give you access to their username and password. Uh, that At least they say that on the online. I'm not going to say that's 100%. Now, Facebook, um, you can put a special request for medically incapacitated or deceased person's account. However, they're still not going to give you uh, your, their password or access to the account. They'll either delete the account or do what they call memorialize. Memorialize accounts lets people be able to post to that account see pictures on that account, but that's it. And uh, Twitter um, will also, it, you, when you contact them, um, they can also delete the, they'll, they'll either, the only thing that they will do is delete the account. However, there's a caveat in that. I guess if you're famous or infamous, it's up to them to delete your account or not. There's some gray area there that they talk about. It depends. Now, Instagram um, and and I'm sorry I had links on here. That's why the slides are a little off there. Uh, they'll either memorialize or remove the accounts. Now, however, for you to do all this, you're going to need, some of them want a power of attorney. Some of them want a birth certificate of the deceased. Like I said, documents that are electronic or physical, you probably need. Uh, birth certificate of that person, death certificate, or even, I forget which one. I think it might have been Instagram once, uh, an obituary of the person that, that passed. So, um, and how you can get past that, I, I mean, there's probably tons of ways, but to get accounts deleted or other things. All right. Notification. When you pass away, how's your wife going to notify? Should your wife notify people? She may notify the people that she knows that are your friends and stuff, but is there other people? Uh, does, um, does she have phone numbers of your friends or of your associates that you need to call? Uh, maybe of your clients, uh, if you if you have a multiple clients and they're expecting you to do some work or something. You don't want any kind of lawsuits coming out after you pass away against your your estate. Uh, social media. Social media is a great idea to put somebody, you know, hey, you know, somebody passed away, that's great. But then again, you're inviting scammers and people that are nefarious to go in there and start hacking you or, or say, or, you know, trying to social engineer your wife and say, oh, well, I was great friends with this guy back in, you know, whenever. And then also uh, people in the workplace, notify them. Normally this stuff is done word of mouth, over the phone and stuff like that, but it, you could use social media uh, to do that. And should you, depends on what you have, um, you know, or what you think you may have. Physical access. This is, uh, and what I mean by this is not only having access to this, but what do you do, what happens to these items after you pass away? So you have uh, your laptops, your drive backups, your servers, Bitcoin wallets. I don't, you know, those kind of things. Those are nice to have. Um, 
your phones, your work, your documents, and your keys. Now, the reason I put these up here is most of the time you'll get these. Now, my dad, he passed away when I was 19. He was in his 40s, went in a boating accident, and drowned. Luckily, he, this was before cell phones and everything else. We got back a wet wallet and his body. That's all we got. We didn't get keys to his truck. We didn't get any kind of information, anything about his accounts. That's all we got. So nowadays, when we have a lot more electronics involved, you want to make sure that your wife knows or your spouse knows where these items are, where they're located, and what to do with them. Uh, I've heard stories of people saying, you know what, just get rid of them. And my mom had that problem. Uh, they say in the first three months after somebody passes away, you do not want to make any big business decisions with, your, with what happens. And this is one great one. Oh, he just played in them electronic things. Just throw them out. Or give them to a church. Or give them to the kids. That's a great idea. But what kind of stuff is on these devices? I've heard of people leaving you know, electronic documents, DD-214s, these important documents that roll back to you on these machines and just saying, here, I don't care. Uh, you know, they don't, they're not thinking in those first three months. They're just trying to figure out, how am I going to survive without this income or without this person? They're not thinking about, am I going to get hacked down the road because some college kid got my laptop and now has you know, my financial records. So you know, that, that's things that we don't think about up front, but we want to think about. And one of the big things is cell phones. So with cell phones, they're a very personal item nowadays. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody, you know, everybody keeps it close to them. You take it with you everywhere you go. Uh, I've had a chance to talk with some fire uh, people in the fire department and people in law enforcement. And I asked them, I said, okay, when you go in a car accident and there's a fatality, do you look for cell phones? And the majority of the people I talked to said, no, we do not look for cell phones. The only time, and I, the, the fire department says, if we find a cell phone, we hand it over to the police. Or if, it's, if somebody's going in an ambulance, we don't know if they're alive or dead, we throw it in the back of the ambulance with whoever's with them. They don't care about your cell phone. They're caring about what's going on. Police department said one thing. They said, if it's an out-of-state person or if it's under an investigation, they're chasing the car, they think it's a drug, they will take it for evidence. Other than that, if it's a person out of town, they said they might look at it. But, you know, and I've talked to the police department, they were really behind in forensics. And I know in West Virginia, they don't really, the, the, where I live, they don't do forensics. They send it off to somewhere else, and you might get it back, you might not. And they're so overloaded, they could care less. So really, the cell phones, and think about what's on your cell phone. You know, all the, the, the information and everything else. Uh, on your cell phone. Now, um, I need a volunteer. Who would want to raise their hand? Who wants to volunteer? Anybody? Jim? Okay. Let me see your cell phone. Make sure it's locked. Uh, I don't want to take a and start hacking a cell phone here. Okay, so he's got a, a night. Oh, I like that one. That's the one with the curve on the sides, right? All right, I'm going to lay that here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. All right, cool. All right, wait. Hold on a second. Let me get right to here. There we go. All right, Eddie. Oh, man, wow. So I want to ask you right now, what is three phone numbers, non-family members, off of your cell phone? Do you know three numbers by heart that are not family off your cell phone? Can anybody do that? I think I could do one. And the only reason I can do one is because it was my home phone number when I was born. That, of course, was not his cell phone. This is his cell phone. I would not do that on purpose. Thank you. But it makes you think. That was, <laughs> he was in the splash zone. I was worried about him. So, <laughs> but think about it. If your cell phone, if you're in a car wreck, that's what's going to happen to your cell phone. And they're going to hand it back to your wife and go, here you go. Here's your husband's cell phone. And you're going to be like, oh, well, how do I get the data off of this? You know, it could be waterlogged. I had a lady the other day, a friend of ours, had a laptop in the back of her car. She went under one of these underpasses. It was raining hard, and she drove into a four-foot thing of water. Her car sunk. Her laptop with her, uh, her uh, term paper that was due three days, next, uh, three days later was underwater, and they brought it to me and said, here, can you fix it? I took out the hard drive, which was still had condensation on it, threw it in a bag of rice, and got it to boot up once, which was enough to get it, the data off of it, which was amazing. So what can you do? Have a plan. 
Uh, we all have worked in IT. Most of us have been in IT a long time. We work with our businesses. They have personal, they have uh, disaster recovery plans. What happens if our systems go down? Well, we just transfer over here. We switch our networks over here. We do all this. Do we have one for home? You may have a go bag and all that kind of stuff, but have a personal disaster recovery plan or a digital will. That's the new term that they're using. And there's companies out there that'll help you build digital wills. Digital wills will be, like I said, your account listings, maybe not all your passwords, but at least a password to get into your passwords or some other help. Uh, safety deposit box or a secure location to keep your items, your backup drives, and that kind of stuff. Same thing as, this is the same stuff as you do at work, but have it for your personal because you're working hard to make money for your family but don't work too hard that you forget about your family. And a lot of us seem to do that, and I'm raising my hand because I'm one of them. Friends and hackers, this is my favorite thing. So this is what my base, basically started my thinking of my talk. I have designated a person that is a friend, I'm picking up shards of glass. Okay, so, so, so I, have, I, I have picked a friend that is a hacker, he, you see he's around here, and I, and I went to him already, and I said, listen, if something happens to me, can you help my wife? I'm not asking you to take her out to dinner, I'm not asking you to, all I'm asking is to help with the electronics, wipe the drives of stuff that she wants to donate, help her get into some passwords, because I don't know too many people, eh, there's some that have technical wives and husbands and all that stuff, usually if you, off, opposites attract, at least in my family. So my wife is good at computers, but to hack passwords, yeah, I don't see that happening. So I asked him, I said, listen, I, I'm not trying to put too much on you, and if you say no, that's fine. But can you help my wife if something happens to me? Yes, okay, step one, that's great. Thank you. Honey, I physically introduce her. This is my friend. He is going to help you. I'm gonna to talk to both of you at the same time, and you're gonna meet face to face. So we don't get that, hi, I'm Mr. Hacker. Yeah, your husband said, I'm going to be helping you out. And I saw on social media where he passed away, and I'm going to help you. No, somebody you're going to meet physical face-to-face. -face. Someone you're going to say, hey, can you help her out? Make sure these drives get wiped if she needs to uh, donate. She might not know where to donate this stuff. Where most of us know schools that need computers, that could use Raspberry Pis and all this. She might look at something and say, that's a piece of junk, throw it away. And you're like, my UBT, you know, or something like that. So designate somebody and don't just put his phone number on his cell phone. Your, your wife may not have your cell, your husband may not have your cell phone when you pass away. So either give her and put it in her phone or leave it on a piece of paper or put it in a book or put it with your, your special documents and keep it handy, that guy's phone number and address of where he can, you can get a hold of him. All right, I am done. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me now. I don't know if I, like I said, I'm not a professional. This is just something that kind of popped into my mind, and I say, us as security folk, we work hard securing other people's stuff. Why don't we start thinking about our own? Because we're not all going to be here forever. So is there any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. situation they were out of town um, that give you know the friend of his died the wife was you know single mm -hmm. in a strange place with most of their tech destroyed yeah. when they woke up from you know yeah. he was the one that did everything yeah yeah and I said I mean my wife does my bills luckily um and, I'm, and that's, we kind of have a little separation to do. It would probably take me a while to get a hold of them. And if you've ever dealt with financial institutions or gas companies or every, anybody else, they always want proof. They always want, well, are you sure? Do you have these documentations? Who are you? I'm not going to release that to you. You know, even my cell phone companies, like, I, I need help. And I'm like, can we talk to whoever owns the account? Because you're on the account, but you don't own the account. And, you know, how do you deal with that? And every company is different. Yeah, it's time to give me that bill. They know where you're yeah, if they know <laughs> they, they know where you live to make you pay. Like your best bill. They know you're canceling credit cards. Mm -hmm. And then you have a house drop off, and then you're longer in the access. Exactly. You'd be surprised how many accounts are linked 
to yeah. things like, well, we'll just send your password to your cell phone. Well, I don't have my cell phone. Or you well, and that was, oh, that was another thing I was going to talk about accounts. So you may have cloud accounts, you may have clients, you may have AWS stuff that keeps constantly billing. Do you really want your wife to keep getting billed for something that you were working on uh, before you passed? She don't know what AWS, she may not, or he may not know what AWS and go, why am I getting an Amazon bill for $300 a month? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, I hate Apple. I'll just come up forward. My, everybody in my family except for me has an Apple phone. My daughter loves to take pictures on her Apple phone. But when you go to Apple and try to download all those pictures, you can't control A. At least I couldn't. Couldn't figure out how to do it. You can't just, you have to select each one and download it. And if they've got thousands of photos, you can't back them up on a hard drive. You're going to have to, there, unless there's a way to do it. I don't know. That's the reason I don't like Apple. Is there a way? Okay, well, then I'm going to have to talk to you after the thing, because I have no clue on how to do that, because I just know Apple has hard time when it doesn't talk back to the mothership. Uh, you know, so that was my, that's, a, yes, but it's a great phone. It works for people, and, and I don't have to troubleshoot it or tech it. I just go, here, honey, have fun with your help. iPhone. So, any other questions? Facebook has a designator. Do they have one of those programs yeah, too? Facebook That's great. And don't That's you great. have to like to log off if like you have to wait certain like thirty days or something? Mm. I was listening to something like you can't just log off on Facebook now. Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I know well, some. I, I know some of these the accounts. I know some of these accounts to delete the account. You have to be inactive for a certain period of time, yeah. and then after that, they'll they'll notify the other person on your account and say, "Hey, is this person still alive?" or or whatever. If not, we're going to put their account as inactive or and then delete it after a certain period of time. I, I, I heard that as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, I did read that too. So just something to think about. Sorry for being the downer of the con. No. <laughs> Thank you guys for all attending. Yeah. I had some people looking to go, death for the last talk. I did not pick my time spot. You can, I think it was good. You could yell at Benny. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Y'all have a safe trip home. Thank you. <laughs> like I had to do the whole